Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Midday Live, coming to you from our studio here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Martin Asiedu Date. Coming up this afternoon... Group demands arrest of Dr. Papakwesi Indum over their locked-up funds at Gold Coast Fund Management. National security locked up in meeting with Christian Council over terror threats. And on the international front, talks on moving Sudan towards civilian rule suspended for three days by country's military leaders. We have details of all these stories, including business, sports, entertainment, all lined up for you within the next one hour. Let's start from the labor front because unionized staff of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority and Maritime Dock Workers Union have backed down their ongoing protest. This was after the president, uh, Nanado Dankwe Kufado, gave an assurance to resolve issues concerning the Temaport expansion concession agreement in eight weeks. The leadership of the unionized staff told members that major concerns which will affect their security and jobs were highlighted. They said although the president has expressed commitment, the fight is still on to numerous issues, including removing the clause on the deal which will affect Ghana's revenue and lead to job losses. That the government itself realized that there's something wrong with the concession agreement. Yes, and so we think that uh, with that alone, it gives us confidence, you know, uh, that something we've done at the end of the day. We don't doubt it. We don't doubt it. Particularly when uh, some work has been done by the Interministerial Committee. And out of that work that was done, as, as you may be aware, the 30% shares that were diluted to 15% was eventually restored. And that is just a first step. And that is enough indication for us that government will be doing something at the end of the day. The national chairman of the Maritime Dock Workers Union, Alaji Abdul Ramadan Beidu, said the union will support government to deliver a better deal. All right, so you would recall that in the last about two weeks ago, there was a terror, a terror attack in Burkina Faso. Now, the Christian Council is currently locked up in a meeting with the National Security Council to fashion out strategies to help the country avert any such attacks. And I would want to have further discussion on this and how we as citizens can also be prepared uh, as national security and the church organizations plan on how they can best protect both their congregants and the, the, the nation as a whole. We've been joined in the studio by Nanayao Akwada. He's the executive, uh, executive director of the Bureau of Public Safety. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for yeah, joining thank us. You, thank you for Good. Me. To start with, um, there are clear concerns looking at the fact that now the, the attacks seem to be moving downwards, closer to, towards Ghana. Should we be afraid as a security person yourself and someone who is concerned about public safety? Well, um, I'm not too sure about whether we should be afraid um, because the motive, one of the motive for such attacks is also to cause fear in the populace. So what we would advise is for us to um, be concerned. We should be concerned about this. We should take the necessary steps that is required to secure our spaces. Um, you have said that the Christian Council, of course, we know by Daily Graphics publication, mm -hmm. is in a meeting with the National Security Council. But we would want the National Security Council to actually look beyond the churches. They should look beyond the churches to other high value targets such as you know the high end restaurants yeah. the shopping malls um, it, basically it where if, foreigners frequent yeah so is it, is it do you, do you think it is a specific decision to target foreigners in other countries or it is the citizens of the countries that they want to attack is it the foreigners they, they, they well, target basically if you understand how these um, terror groups operate theirs is to strike make the news and still you know, send a message either to the political class or the religious sect. So if you study how they operate, they change their operations at any time. In, in, 
access, according to Acts Africa Center for Security and Intelligence Service, their report indicated that they, are, they want to target churches. But the point remains that these terror groups are very, very versatile, and they can change their form mm. and in any time. So we must not, we must look beyond the churches. We should not look sight focus on the churches, on but we churches. must look beyond okay. the churches. We'll be coming back to you to help us understand how we as individuals, what role we can play in, in, in protecting ourselves and our, our communities. Let, let's go to the phone lines now and speak to Emmanuel Kuting. He's the executive director of the Africa Center for Security and Counterterrorism. Uh, they issued that statement, warning of an impending attack, and uh, would want to find out really is it how, how, how close or dangerous is this threat? Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. It, it, it seems the, the statement you released has kick, kicked into action the decision of the national security and the churches to hold a crucial meeting. Do you think, what do you first of all make of that decision? In fact, I think the meeting is a very crucial one, and uh, we are very happy the national security took that uh, option. In fact, the stakeholders uh, in all of this is the churches. And as we rightly put to the intelligence, we get it, is that churches are the main target. But beyond the meetings, I think the national security should collaborate with these churches and give them some form of capacity building and, and educate the church members as to how to handle things and the need to change the old ways of doing things. As you are aware, more often than not, this terrorist group have, have always had local collaborators and they don't just wake up in a day and strike. They can even have local collaborators who are church members. So it's about time churches equally uh, employ technology by way of scanners and CCTVs, and explore their church members to be very vigilant. Mr. Cotton, why do you think there is a, I mean, clearly they would have other places uh, that they might want to target, like uh, any place of public convergence, the malls, etc. But why churches, you think? If you look at this very terrorist group, the Salafi, and what they are doing in Mali and lately in Burkina Faso, and the intelligence they are picking, you know, I mentioned on your sister station and on your very network the other time that this battle is about ideology. So they want to create some panic and fear and employ on their members, especially those they are able to radicalize, to go against Christians and drive away Christians in areas that they, are, uh, they, they have control over. So that is why this intelligence we feel is right, and that is why we feel that indeed churches are the target. If you look at Burkina Faso over the past few days, I'm sure yesterday you heard another Catholic church was attacked and a lot of people lost their lives. So we are convinced that Given what is happening in Burkina Faso and Mali and the pattern of events, this intelligence could be right. Mm. The, the, the other concern for many is that these uh, jihadists will not enter our borders wielding guns or bearing weapons. They actually come in as individuals with an idea and then gradually start recruiting and changing people's minds to join their, 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 their ideology. How can we deal with that? Because this is not something that the eye can see. First of all, I want to uh, 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 encourage and advise our Muslim brothers that when we talk about the proliferation of moxies, especially in the northern part of Ghana and the central region and western region, it is not that we are against the expansion of Islam. These radical groups are in the hinterlands and hiding under the guise of providing a, a mox for communities, and they hide under that to radicalize our people. And like you rightly put it, they will come to our borders holding weapons. No, they come in, have local collaborators, they strategize and they strike. 
That is why we have to look at that very curiously. And it is the duty of all of us. You know, Ghana, we have been very blessed. Religious tolerance is among us to the extent that you see the chief imam visiting churches and vice versa. So I think that Christians and Muslims all together should unite against this radicalized group and will make sure we streamline their activities in the rural areas. The, the chief imam has, you know, urged the Muslim youth to report any such person that, you know, is pushing such an agenda, so, such, such an ideology, and that they should all be on the lookout for persons with suspicious attitude and behavior, especially also look out for their other uh, religious partners, as those in, in, in the churches, etc. Beyond urging them, what else can the youth do and the leadership of the Islam community? I think in general we should be very particular about strangers we find in our midst. And we need to employ landlords in particular. They should be very mindful of the people they rent their properties to. They should have a form of relationship with the rent control and national security such that they can promptly pass out information to these people to verify their identities or otherwise. And then the hotels. It is about time they establish a good relationship with national security, such so that any guest that enters the hotel, you take their person's details or any form of identification, that information should be swiftly passed over to national security. We right. should have such a system so that in real time, they can verify their identities or who is in a particular hotel or otherwise. Right. And above all, we as citizens, we need to be vigilant and security is the duty of all of us and not the preserve of only the, the uh, state institutions. We're grateful for your time, Emmanuel Koting, for your, your insight as always. And uh, we'll come in studio to continue from where he left off, having to do with vigilance and how uh, the citizens can play a role in ensuring public safety. You are quite particularly interested in public safety. How can we go about being vigilant? If you say be vigilant. Okay. Well, I think um, from this morning's meeting with the National Security Council, um, I'll be expecting that moving forward, the churches are going to have layered security arrangements for their premises. And when I talk about layered security arrangements, these are people who are ready to die. Right. And so if you want to wait for them right at the entrance, let me use door to the church, you are certainly going to lose people when something goes bad. Mm. So you must have layered arrangements within the perim um, set a perimeter around your church where people who are coming in and going out, you will have means of scanning them, uh, examining them, and okay. clearing them before they enter your church. This is going to be the new norm mm. for us because you have cl clearly stated, which is the case, that these guys are not going to come in with RPGs mm. and bombs on, on their shoulders. They are going to come in as, if you like, in security terms, very naked, and they are going to build and recruit here. Mm. So this must be the new norm. It should not be that the churches beyond the meeting are just going to go back put measures in place for one to two weeks or three months or to yeah. six months and then go back to rest on their hours. This is actually the time that they are also just preparing in their preparatory stage whilst they are in Ghana. That, that's a, the, the other concern. Now, how would you feel going to church and, you know, there are security scanners there at the entrance of the church? Probably, um, I'm sure it will have to get to a time they now have to physically search people before you go to a house of worship. What should the church do in psyching people for these times that we're in? Well, I just hope that it doesn't get there because elsewhere where they've advanced with security, I've been in the States, I've gone to church. I, I was never, uh, you know, tap, there was no tap down on examining you. Okay. in that manner. But then you are examined and if they find you suspicious, you have a dedicated 
um, official of the church who keeps his eye on you and if he finds you suspicious at least I've been in a church where I've been asked to take off my heart in the US so okay. these are some basic things that we must um, teach the church to mm. look out for and I'm glad Emmanuel mentioned that with the national security beyond this morning's meeting must build liaise with the churches to build capacity for the church so that they'll be able to identify mm -hmm. what is a potential threat what should be ignored and what should not be ignored my there there is also the concern of we easily forgetting so after today a month six months maximum maybe a year then we forget and become laxed again what should you, what can we do to sustain this level of awareness and vigilance and attention for at least, I don't know how long, maybe the next 10, 20, 50 years? Because it could be any time. Well, uh, what we need is continuous briefing, continuous engagement with um, district, regional, and national security. We must continuously mm. be engaging. If we, because I indicated that this should be the new norm. So it should never be the case that we want to go back beyond what we have started and where we are now. This is the new norm. And mm. so systems must be put in place for churches to engage the security levels right from the district to the national. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it here for now. Certainly it's an, a, a discussion that is ongoing. And uh, after that meeting with the national security, we'll bring you an update of what you and all of us need to do to secure ourselves and our communities. We've been speaking with uh, Nana Yao Akwara, he's executive director of the Bureau of Public Safety. Thank you very much once again for your time. And uh, this is still Midday Live on TV3. Let's swing straight to the Bono region now. More than 20 persons have been arrested after a protest to draw government attention to the abandoned new Doma uh, Kotukrum dual carriage road project in Sunyai, which turned chaotic. Our Bono Regional Correspondent Larry Parkway Simos reports a police uh, officer was nearly lynched by the irate demonstrators. The agitation, according to the protesters, was as a result of the spate of motor accidents on the abandoned dual carriage project, claiming that 32 lives had been lost on that stretch. They blocked the road and burnt car tires overnight. It got more intense when one of the protesters was arrested. The irate crowd then began pelting the police with stones from all directions, accosting one of them and damaging two police vehicles. The arrival of a police reinforcement team led to the arrest of some of the demonstrators. Now, I had to remove the, the, the lorry ties and the wood that blockade the police car. So as at the time the car took off, I was the only one left on the ground. There were people that had surrounded me with stones, catalyses and all other weapons. But thank God the peace I was keeping saved me. One of the demonstrators, Hassan Mubarak, said the dual carriage road has been abandoned, resulting in numerous accidents. For close to 12 years, the project has stalled. Many lives have been lost on this stretch, including four police officers. DSP Franklin Kramo said those arrested would be processed for court. And uh, staying with issues about rioting and demonstration, a group calling itself the Coalition of Agreed co Aggrieved Customers of Gold Coast Fund Management in Cape Coast are calling on security agencies in the country to arrest Dr. Papakwesi Indum. At a press conference earlier today, the group gave management of Gold Coast Fund Management up to May ending to deliver a payments plan for their locked up investments. Spokesperson for the Aggrieved Customers of Gold Coast Fund Management, Reverend Asante Safokrobia, said their lockdown funds have led to the collapse of their businesses. He explained the situation has led to the death of some pensioners whose retirement benefits have been locked up. Others are collapsing, he rushed to the hospital, have already died. Marriages are being broken. Yes. Others have gone so already. We want to address this session to the Securities and Exchange Commission. We want to state that we are aware of the ban that CERC has placed on this company not to take any 
new deposits. By which time, Gold Coast Fire Management was still taking deposits. Reverend Safu Krobia stated they have already written to Securities and Exchange Commission requesting a meeting between customers and Gold Coast Fund Management. He noted they are threatening to report the situation to the regulators of banks in the United States because Indom's group has acquired a collapsing bank in the U.S. Some customers said all attempts to negotiate with Gold Coast Fund Management have failed and the company has since June last year failed to pay both principal and interest and he wants government to intervene. Uh, let's go to the phone lines now and speak with uh, Benjamin Afre. He's the general manager in charge of investor relations at Gold Coast uh, Fund Management. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, sir. There seems to be a growing agitation across the country, at least two major uh, cities, Kumasi yesterday and then Cape Coast uh, today. Has this come to your attention and what is the fund doing about it? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to your, your listeners. Well, so the company has been putting a number of um, <clears throat> um, options and a number of solutions to address the problem that we have, the liquidity problem that we have. Um, including a proposition to the SEC that they have reviewed and they have come back to us with some further clarification that they need. Uh, but as we do that, we are also aggressively pursuing all the investments uh, that we have made so that we can recover and pay customers. And so it, it is not as if payments are not ongoing at all. Just that the, the quantum we are looking for in terms of the investment we have made out we haven't been able to recover everything at a go. And so as and when we raise any new money, then we pay out to the customer. As and when we're able to recover any of the investments, then these are paid out to customers. So since last year, and uh, I've been up to uh, this week, payments have been ongoing, just that it is not the quantum they are looking for. So it is not everybody that he has covered, but we know that the company is making that effort. Uh, to pay as much as be able to raise from the investment they've made. But have you have you engaged the customers in any way to give them that assurance that you have the money and that you will pay them? We have assured and we have engaged our customers in a number of um, correspondence with them and even face-to-face -face interactions with them. I was in Cape Coast myself uh, to engage with our customers. It, well, it didn't go too well at the end of it because of uh, the behavior of some of our customers. But otherwise, we have had that engagement with our customers as well. And what we've explained to them is that the investments have been made, but there's a problem with liquidity that we are working to resolve. And so if they give us a bit of time, a bit of patience, and they have been patient, I must admit, but what has happened would require a bit more patience from their side so we can resolve the difficulties that, that you know, what we are going through has actually brought to them. But you can rest assured, yes, the investment haven't gone bad, it will not go bad. But we need a bit of time as we turn this around quickly into cash to be able to satisfy every request that has been made out. So, uh, so the assurance is you have enough cash, enough money to pay off every uh, investor, uh, every assurance, customer of yours? The assurance is that we have enough investment to cover the liabilities that we have. What we are doing is, is to turn... Uh, that investment into cash so that we can pay. That is the assurance we are giving to our customers. Can you give them at least some timelines in terms of assurance, at least? Well, the truth is that we, we have been paying. We have been paying. So as and when we go to raise them, then it is paid out. Assure them. If we were to raise as much money this week, mm. those monies will be paid out to the customers. And that's what we've been doing all the while. You don't want to give a specific date and something happens because these are lessons you've made with other third parties okay. as well. Yeah. Right. But we can assure them that if you raise all the money today, we'll pay as many of them as we must pay. But I can also confirm that payments have been ongoing. And any time we make these payments, we send copies of the payments we've made, the people, the branches, to the regulator. So the regulator is aware of the payment that we have made. That is ongoing. Them. All right, finally... There are calls also for the arrest of the owner and the CEO of these 
of this fund management. That's Dr. Papakwesi Indum. They are saying that if he is not arrested, he might also disappear like the CEO of Men's Gold, number one. How, what do you that's make a, of this call? That's a very misplaced call for anybody to make. If the company will run away, the company would have run away long ago. There are, as we've already said, there are enough investments we have made that she will be able to turn everything into cash or pay. There is no need, and I don't. I think it's an misplaced call for anybody to make. Where where is Doctor going? He has been in the country working with that. Everybody has seen him go out to talk to customers. That if they will be patient and work with that, we'll be able to resolve this. Look, we've done this for 25 years. Mm. It's not a five-year or a two-year company. It's a company that has created wealth and value for people 25 years and counting. Right. I mean, these are difficult times, and I must admit, they are difficult times. But the truth is that the company has also made that commitment and assurance to our customers that we will work with them to resolve this. Okay. There is no need to run away or close the new business. We will be here to work with them to resolve this. And that's the assurance that we give them. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Afre. Benjamin Afre is the man general manager in charge of investor relations with Gold Coast um, Fund Management given assurance there. So your money will be paid. Just relax. Let's turn our attention to some other developing, running story, which has to do with the closure of two radio stations in Accra and some other parts of the country. So the managing editor of the Inside Newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., says the National Communications Authority is relying on an archaic law to violate the constitution with impunity. Speaking at a forum by Free Media Vanguard in Accra to express their disgust over the closure of some radio stations, he said the media and other interest, uh, interest groups would be galvanized to fight against injustice uh, against media practice in Ghana. Free Media Vanguard, the media advocacy group, is championing the fight against what they describe as an agenda to silence the media in Ghana. At the forum dubbed Media Freedom in Ghana, speakers condemned the closure of radio stations by the NCA, describing the action as an MPP government agenda to silence the media, especially those that profess social democratic principles. Managing editor of the Inside newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., charged various groups in the country to put their energies together to fight the injustice perpetrated by government. The right of free expression belongs to every child. It belongs to every adult. It belongs to every woman. It belongs to every man. It's a right of citizenship. So if you take away the right of free expression, you weaken citizenship. Former Gender Minister Nana Oyelita condemned the closure of the radio stations, adding it is an act to restrict freedom of the people. And what the MPP government is doing by trying to control the voice, trying to control the media, is to control the people. And for the MPP government, you can never ever control the people of Ghana. Former ambassador to Namibia, Harunata, noted the media business is not lucrative and government is taking advantage to gag it. The NCA uses a legality, so to speak, to go to shut down these radio stations. And it's possible, I haven't gone through their books, it's possible they just don't have the money. Member of Parliament for Tamale North, Al Hassan Suhini, provided some documents which he said confirms government's agenda to weaken the media front. It seems like an attempt by government to emasculate a section of the media that they think is critical of, you know, their administration. And I say so based on a report that I came across entitled License to Censor, the Use of Regulations to Restrict Media Freedom. Now this is a research report by Freedom House, an international organization noted for its campaign for the expansion of media freedoms. A middle-aged resident in Fijai in Takarade, Akwesiata, was reportedly tied to a Toyota Tundra and dragged on the streets of Adiembra Wednesday. Viewers are warned that some of the images we'll be showing are quite disturbing. Uh, but the, the, the latest is that um, Akwesiata, when he was narrating his ordeal, said that he was accused of being uh, a thief, of stealing, 
by one man called Panya and his two friends of stealing pieces of treated wood in the neighborhood. Akwesi said, uh, said allegedly he was brutally assaulted before finally being tied to the vehicle. Akwesiata sustained extensive abrasion and injuries and currently receiving treatment at the Ifia Quanta Regional Hospital. Meanwhile, the case has been reported to the police in the district. We apologize for those images. Uh, time now for the MTN video report and our citizen journalist Divine Atipu calls on government to complete a chips compound at Mafi in the Central Tong District. Mafi Afangokok is located in the Central Tong District of the Volta region. And this is a chip compound started by the previous government, which is the NDC government. And the project has come to a standstill since the MDP has come to power. Since the nearest health center from the village is about five kilometers away, and we are pleading to the government and any other non governmental organizations to come to the aid of the citizens in Mafi Afonokoko. Citizens, journalists, divine, Atipu, Afo. You can also send us your MTN video report via WhatsApp line 055-1433-044. Again, 055-1433-044. We'll be back shortly with more. Stay with us. Thank you very much for staying with us. Time now for business. The year-on-year -year inflation for April 2019 was 9.5%. This was a marginal increase of 0.2% points from the 9.3% recorded in March. The increase is attributed to the increase in inflationary rate of non-food items. Within the food group, five subgroups recorded inflation rates that were higher than the Groups average of 7.3%. And these are coffee, tea, and cocoa, fruits, mineral water, soft drinks, and uh, fruits and, and beverages, meat and meat products, and vegetables. Within the non food group, also, five subgroups recorded inflation rates that were higher than the group's average of 10.4%. And these are clothing and footwear, a rate of 14.3%. Recreation and culture, a rate of 14.1%. Transport, a rate of 13.2%. Furnishings, household equipment, a rate of 12.8%. The year-on-year non-food inflation rate for April 2019 was 10.4%, compared to 9.7% recorded for March. The year-on-year -year food inflation rate for April 2019 was 7.3%, compared with 8.4% recorded in March 2019. Inflation rate for imported items, which was 11.0%, was 2.2 percentage points higher than that of locally produced items of 8.8%. At the regional level, four regions, namely Upper West, Bono Ahafu, Western and Ashanti, recorded inflation rates above the national average of 9.5%. Ashanti region recorded the highest food inflation rate. Acting government statistician David Combat explains. The following contributed to the high inflation rate of 9.6%, a food inflation rate for Ashanti region. Cocoa, tea and, co and coffee of a rate of 14.8%, oils and fats, a rate of 11.2%, vegetables, a rate of 10.7%, and mineral waters, soft drinks, fruit, and vegetables, a rate of 8%. We are still working on getting inflation rates for the newly created regions. So now for the now food inflation rate of 11.5 for Upper West, we see that transport is the main driver of 23.3%. And as we have always indicated, this calls for further Further research. The Consumer Price Index measures the average price of a bunch of consumer goods and services. 
The Agriculture Ministry intends to prosecute managers who have misappropriated public funds earmarked for modernizing agriculture in Ghana. The Chief Director of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, Robert Patrick Akumbia, uh, says that no manager of the fund will escape blame if they fail to deliver. Here's a report by Frederick Clarence Williams. In line with the efforts to modernize agriculture and to ensure all-year-round farming, government in 2017 introduced several modernizing agriculture programs. As managers of public funds, this must never be lost on you. We are expected to ensure that funds entrusted in our care are put to the right use in accordance with law. The ministry charged officials to sensitize the implementing institutions to improve their financial and technical performance. It again warned fund managers to be proactive and adhere to directives. We must remember that in our leadership rules, we cannot escape blame if we fail in our duty to ensure the objectives of the MAC funds, which the government of Ghana has signed to. The Deputy Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Obi Amwa, stressed the need for airing metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives to be held responsible for any infractions. In line with this, a performance measurement and implementation of MAG has been included in the DPAT assessment beginning with the year 2019. As such, it has also become necessary to undertake today's program to address the technical and knowledge gap in the PIP for key actors of MMDAs. Global speaker and founder of StarTow, Orin Simmerman, uh, wants Ghanaian startups to take advantage of available funding opportunities globally. He further urged government to be more committed to the growth of startups in Ghana. He was speaking ahead of the second edition of the Media General Startup Fair and Funding Summit in Kumasi. Job creation is a key instrument for achieving sustainable and inclusive growth needed to generate national wealth and reduce poverty. According to the 2017-2018 IFS report, Ghana is currently facing three critical economic challenges, namely a slowdown of economic growth, rising unemployment, and a surging public debt. Per statistical evidence and reliable research findings, a very strong supportive entrepreneurial framework will be needed to ensure unemployment figures don't reach alarming levels. To contribute to growing startups, Media General has not only given free airtime to startups to talk about their businesses on business focus, but also organized startup fairs to help startups promote their businesses. Sharing his views on development of startups ahead of Media General Startup Fair in Kumasi, leading contributor to the Israeli and international entrepreneurship and innovation scene, Oren Simanian, said, the growth of the startup ecosystem in Ghana is impressive. So you tell them you go to friends, family, and the, we call it the triple F. Friends, family, and fools. Today it's a bit different. We say there is a friends, family, and Facebook. Because there, no one is full anymore. People understand. People read on the internet and they know if what you're developing exists, does not exist. And when I say fools, it means that and when I say uh, fools that is history and f uh, Facebook that is the future, it means that through the social channels you can actually raise supporters. If you would like to approach a top person and raise money, raise his awareness first of all, you have to speak his language. Be efficient, be really clear, and know what you're asking. You only have one shot with specific person. He commended Media General for creating an opportunity for startups to grow their businesses. Piece, uh, my 50 cent, my piece of advice to you is to start. Just start. Move what you need to move and start. Start working. The Media General Startup Fair and Funding Summit will take place at the Kumasi City Mall from the 17th to 19th of May from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. each day. All right, so if you're in and around the Ashanti region, the Startup Fair is in Kumasi and would want you to go there, join the team and participate. I'm sure you'd really love it. This is still Midday Live on TV3. So let's go on to some other stories now. Academic activities have come to a halt after fire destroyed the senior high school block of Apayo 
Kofrom uh, DA School in the Ashanti region. The fire gutted the structure around 2 a.m. on Thursday. Our Ashanti regional correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar has been speaking to local authorities on immediate steps to restore academic work. It's not a good news this morning at Ampeyo grow from DHS at all. Academic activities have come to a halt after fire swept through three classrooms and the library facility of the school. Now the students are stranded and school authorities are contemplating what to do next after this fire incident. Um, this is very, very unfortunate. Um, a building that is being used daily by the school children uh, just overnight has been destroyed by fire. This morning I'm here with my team, supervision and other officers from the education directorate to ensure that the number of children displaced, we can find a place for them. Fortunately for us, there is uh, another sister school just some few meters away from the school. So quickly what we are doing is to relocate the form ones and the form twos to that they have an empty block there so we can get them there as early as possible. And then the form threes will be kept in the old building. That's the arrangement that we're putting in now. Rather unfortunately, the stationery that the headmistress office completely bent. And we're going to make a very fast arrangement, get some few materials for them. So that the form threes who are preparing the next three weeks for the BEC can also be taught. We've directed the headmistress to reclassify get some teachers to fix the form ones and form twos and get the others for the form threes as well. That, this is a very, very unfortunate incident. As the district chief executive of the area, what form of intervention are you bringing to the school to ensure that academic activity return back to normal? Well, thank you very much. You know, that's why I'm here with the education director and my coordinating that is here. All that we can, that's why you know, I, I rush here in the morning to come and see what is happening to the building. Because school, you know, the president is interested by school. So you have to put all our resources there to see how you can improve the education this in the district. And the engineer will come here in the next, in, the, in about an hour's time to see what we can do. And we are going to have a renovation of the whole building and bring them back. So maybe by a month's time or two, we will bring them back here. The cause of the fire is yet to be ascertained. But the fire occurred around 2 a.m this done. Local authorities have promised to renovate the building. For now, they are moving both Form 1s and Form 2 to a sister, nearby sister school to continue with their academic activities. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Ampeyo Krofu. And in the studios of TV3, my name is Martin Nesiedu Date. We'll be back shortly with the latest in the world of sports. Stay with us. In entertainment news this afternoon, the countdown to the 20th VGMA is on. One key category to look out for is the Artist of the Year. Who walks away with the award? Well, here is a report. The music's biggest night, the VGMA is days away, and the stakes are very high. Six heavyweight musicians are in the race for the topmost category. Artist of the Year, Kim Promise, Kwame Eugene, Joe Metto, Sarkodie, Shatawale, and of course, Tomboy are all eyeing the Ultimate Award. But the big question is, who walks home with the topmost accolade? Though we are different, we make a sound. I think I'll go for Beam Nation. That's good. I think it should go to Kwame Eugene. I still vote for Sarkodie. The one who will be winning is Kwame Eugene. Michelle Nyuma are cause of this and present come back Because why are the pa? And Nyuma want to be an I was wrong. Yen San Coast stage and perform and will be a new shot and tea. On one else from the man. Yeah, funny in our boss to this year. Artist of the year. Dance or most popular song be be a be be a nominating be a stone boy befa. You can musician a stone boy or you talented musician. And you by force on your own two. But I make up for a make a tree. Who is some way? We already know Stone Boy from a shaman to the west. We like Stone Boy. Artists of the year in India, Nipa and Deberman, ASM, who deserve it. And I like you'll be a Missian in your mom, hot Tommy, SM for life. 
SMD or be anti minta stone boy, stone boy never will never be and shut out your own one child. I stone boy. Okay, so why do you want Sitawale to win? I like the guy, see, guy. And then some music, you hear the music, they give sense. Yes. Some saying that's why everybody likes Sitawale. Okay, sack, okay, sack, okay, sack. Senior, oh, yeah, senior, where don't cry, senior, penny, the penny, and you go, sack, be the ish, and you go. Sakwadi, Satawale, Stoneboy. SM for life. SM for life. no win. Obia, Nini, Ono. Eh, no, 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 Award-winning musician and 2019 VGMA Artist of the Year nominee, Stoneboy suspects a ploy to ensure he misses out on the upcoming VGMAs. In a tweet, the sugar hit maker lamented, quote, his uh, detractors are sabotaging him in a way for him to go home without a plaque. His tweet read, we are aware of all forms of sabotage. Beam Nation shall rise. This year, mediocrity stands no chance. Give this your last shot. Unquote. Well, the clock is fast ticking to uh, Ghana's biggest music night here in Accra. And I will know who is the artist of the year shortly. And breaking news just coming in is that the artist of the year has been named. It is... We'll find out on Saturday, shouldn't we? That's how we bring uh, the bulletin to a close. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin. Let's see if that. There's more news on our website, 3news.com. You have a good afternoon as always. Stay positive. Bye for now.